Welcome to the Market Minute for Saturday, the 2nd of March. I'm going to do something a little different today. Instead of talking about where I think this particular rally might stall out or where it might fall back to if it starts to drop and find support, that to me in today's market seems to be a fool's errand because the market is basically just ignoring the technicals and just going based on supply and demand. Some might say it's a bubble, but I seem to remember Alan Greenspan talking about irrational exuberance back in 1995 or 1996, and the, the market went on for another four years past that. So we can't use our sense of what we think is a bubble or what we think is a rational exuberance as a timing signal. So we just have to kind of play along with this musical chairs market as long as the music is playing, continue to play it in a specific way. So that brings up the question, what is working today? What is working in today's market? Obviously, looking at this chart, we had a very different market on the bottom in 2020 into 2021, right? So that was from that sharp correction spawned a very, very strong bull. And that was followed by a true right off the shelf definition of a bear market, more than 20%. And it took about 18 months to finally break into the new bull. And so now we're in a new cyclical bull market. The point I want to make with you guys is the strategies that worked so well during this bull did not work particularly well during this bear. So what we had to do was once we determined that the market was no longer in what's called quiet and trending character, was starting to move into volatile and trending to the downside character, then we had to switch up our game plan. It's a completely different market with completely different edges and changes in price, time, and volatility. And then once we were in the groove on this particular market, once it transitioned back into the bull again, we did have to switch around our approach. What works in this market does not particularly work well in this market. And it just goes back and forth. So really your job as a trader is to understand the edges that the market is offering you. It's out there trying to tell you what it's providing as an edge. Most of the time though, we don't listen to that. So what a lot of people get into is like, as the market tries to transition into a bear, they're still mentally in the bull and still fighting for what was working for them so well back there because people don't like to change. And then so finally, once they get in tune with what the bear is doing and the price starts going higher and they start finding that their strategies don't work anymore, Again, they're still fighting, still trying to use these strategies that work so well for them because people don't like to change. So that begs the question, what is working today? Well, first of all, the price is showing the same quiet and trending character. So it's stair-stepping type of movement. So it'll break out, consolidate, maybe pull back a little bit, break out, consolidate. And it's very repetitive, it's very linear. This is very, very different type of market character between price, time, and volatility versus what we had with this big swinging market with elevated risk premium, much higher VIX, and big changes in implied volatility. We're not seeing the same market at all now. So what was working back then in 2022 does not work particularly well in 2024. So let's look at a typical strategy. Let's say we wanna do a one standard deviation iron condor. We're gonna look for options which are about 16 delta or so, and we're gonna find them to be to the downside about 50, 60, and then to the upside here is about 5,200. So that represents about a one standard deviation into what is the following Friday, about a, a week of trading for that particular range. So if we look at this on the chart, we can see that the range that we're given into this coming week, into this coming Friday, goes up from 5,200 at the top side down to about 5060 to the downside. So that's about the range that we're given 
to work with at this. Now that's for a one standard deviation. If we wanted to, we could always go further out of the money, but then we're dealing with much lower reward to risk. And normally the big risk on these, these types of trades is you wake up one morning and you're down 60 handles in the pre-market because something happened overnight and then it just keeps on going. So it's very, very common with very low volatility markets that are in an epic bowl like this to wake up all of a sudden one day and you've got a pretty ugly haircut on your hands and you're being run through on the downside. So it's very difficult to control risk. What we find is as these markets continue to go on in these rallies, people sit on the sideline and they get impatient and they say, well, this market's just never gonna pull back. So I may as well just get what I can right now. And then this is ultimately that's usually the point where you get that run through on the downside. Now, I should say that you can make this work depending on how the defense is. But again, this is like a musical chairs market. When it decides to distribute, you may not get a chance to be able to get out to the downside on your put spreads at the debit that you're looking for. Without getting too hard into the Greeks, one of the things that makes iron condors difficult in markets like this is the fact that they're always going to be short vega. So there's a negative vega, which means that it wants the implied volatility to drop after you've entered the position. So think about that for a second. What are the odds that the, after a big long rally like this, that the implied volatility is going to drop? Well, maybe just a little bit if it, if it continues to go higher, but more likely you're gonna see the implied volatility explode if the price drops. And this is gonna work really, really against a position like this. When we have any kind of a downside movement at all and the volatility spikes from there, you find yourself trapped into the position for days. It, it does not allow you to get an elegant exit from it. And this is why the answer for what works during a long cyclical bull market like this is time spreads. We need to use time spreads during markets like this. So we can still sell premium, but the big difference here is that we now have a long Vega position. So what are the odds that after a long bull run like this, that we're actually gonna see the implied volatility rise? Well, it's pretty good because on any kind of pullback, we're gonna see volatility rise. And this is obviously going to help a position like this. Now, the inherent edge behind a time spread is if we plot the value of an option of the two different options. So we have what's called a short-term option or a front option, and then we have a back option. So in this case, maybe we're trading a four March option versus a 12 April for the front versus the back option. If we graph these based on the option value, of today, we're gonna to see that short-term option or front option is gonna expire and run out of value during this time. So this would be, you know, March, in this case, March the 4th is where this option just completely runs out of all of its extrinsic value. Now, during this time, that long option, in this case, the 12 April, which is gonna have more extrinsic value, this is gonna generally maintain most of its value during the whole time of just a couple of days. It's really not gonna have that much time decay whatsoever. So the differential, now it will once again have its day by the time we get into April, the same thing will happen. But the differential here between the two, between that short and long option, the decay, and I'll just say the change in decay here is what makes these things profitable. And also the fact that we're now in a long Vega trade, which will enjoy any kind of pullback or spike in volatility. So now we have the edges aligned more closely with what the market wants. And this is why they perform better during markets like this. Now you might not have traded a time spread like this diagonal before. And don't worry because they're actually fairly easy. They're comprised of two things. First of all, we start off with a long put option. So a long put option is gonna have a profit and loss diagram, which is gonna look something like this. 
So if the price goes lower, this will explode in value. Now, of course, I'm simplifying things to begin with. And then we're going to trade for the income. So that this long option just becomes more of a margin control and a hedge to the downside. And what we're going to use to oppose that is going to be a short option, which we sell to open. And this is going to create the exact opposite. This is going to create a position that gains in value if the price goes up or even sideways because of that extrinsic option decay. So by nature, we have a position which is hedged against itself. So whether or not the price crashes tomorrow or it just rips to the upside, we can control our management of this position. So either way that it goes, we really don't care that much. With that said, what works best is when the price basically doesn't go anywhere or has a very slight upwards bias, maybe even to some degree a very slight downwards bias. We don't want to see the price flying around like this. That would be better off if we had price movement like that. That would certainly be better off if we were either swinging positions or playing very, very wide iron condors, but we'd have to have the risk premium to justify placing that strategy as we talked about before. Now here's an example about how we manage something like this on a campaign basis. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our long option. We're gonna place our long option, that sets our hedge, that sets our risk control to the downside, and then every day we're going to place another at the money put option. This is gonna become our campaign where on a campaign basis, we don't care about the results of any one particular trade. What we're looking for is over the duration of the campaign, we will make our fair share. And in this case, it took seven trading days or about eight calendar days. And on the SPX, we were able to earn 1,300, which was a return on capital of 22.5% or a return on margin of 12.1%. So notice that I don't really care what happens to the long put option. I mean, I care, but really not that much. It's meant to be a sacrificial instrument, especially in a bull market where we're generally going to see the price trending higher. So with the price generally trending higher, we should see the majority of these short put options should be traded for a profit. Now, occasionally the price will go down, in which case we may lose a little bit of capital on those short put options, but it's going to be to the benefit of the long put option when the price goes down. So it's a very, very simple repetitive strategy. And as long as we have the right underlying conditions, this becomes a simple trade where it's just a matter of time before we earn our target profits, in which case we're looking for 20%, but if that's just an arbitrary number, we could look for 30%, take a little bit longer, or if you want to reset more often, you could set for 10%. So this is the campaign diagonal. This is what we're doing in the trading room every single day. And this is what's working right now. All right, that's it for today's Market Minute. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next one.